So I compiled a bunch of examples uh, just to talk over them, just to show you what kind of uh, is being done in the industry and what these tools are capable of doing. Okay, this is, um, this is an architect that graduated from Ohio State. His name is Alex uh, Hogreff. And he now has an architectural visu visualization company. And uh, he basically started using SketchUp, Photoshop, and Illustrator, actually really primitive tools, nothing advanced, nothing that uh, you wouldn't know by now after you're done with this class. And he developed these kind of visual techniques of st making stylized drawings. Uh, you could Google him. I'll actually Google him for you, Alex Hogreff. If you look at images, he does like all these amazing drawings, like plans, axons, uh, renderings, and he just does it by spending a lot of time on stylizing them in Illustrator or Photoshop. So a lot of painting, brushing, texturing, so all kinds of stuff that couldn't be automated as much. So you, it will need like manual work and some sort of visual uh, development. So basically, kind of practice and experience. And he also has some tutorials on how to make these sorts of drawings. So he explains. Can you close the door, please? Thank you. So he shows you how to convert a day daylight rendering to a night rendering, for instance, by just applying Photoshop layers. So it's not basically uh, done using a rendering software anymore. It's basically done in post-processing using Photoshop. Right? And he does, uh, he does show like how to do layers, layered work like uh, plants, just giving you as a as like a, as like an example, if you want to look at his work, uh, for this assignment we'll be doing something similar to these sections, uh, something that you're going to bring in from Illustrator, and in Photoshop we're going to add these layers, and add some use some brushes and just add depth basically, just add some plasticity to our sections. And in these tutorials he basically shows like how it's done. He this is kind of what he exports. Uh, this is kind of the initial rough product that he gets from SketchUp, and this is uh, kind of what happens after it's edited in Photoshop. And what we're going to do is a bit more streamlined, a bit more advanced, because we're going to bring our sections directly from Illustrator, which already have some uh, layers and pochets built up, so it will be a lot easier to produce these sections. Okay? Uh, but I just want to show you some of his work. So this is a, this is a, this would be a section perspective. So it's partially cutting through geometry and partially showing the space uh, through the building. So the red areas will be the cut elements, right, that are highlighted with pochets. And whatever you're seeing is in elevation. But in this case, it's a, it's a hybrid drawing. It's a section and perspective. Um, this is by the same guy. Uh, it's a planimetric drawing. Uh, this is another section drawing. So the essence of producing these drawings is basically a twofold. You would have an orthographic drawing. It's all lines. And then uh, that will have like precise site information, building information, right? S ground lines, slabs, walls, thicknesses. And then you will bring it into an editing software like Photoshop and you will add textures to it to show kind of main elements and add like colors to it, trees, people, silhouettes, background. So that will be like a post-processing uh, Photoshop work. You won't be able to generate this directly out of Rhino. Uh, so I just wanted to show you some examples of what people are doing using this sort of techniques, basically. So here, you're seeing another section. And then there's tons of layering done, right? So there's a background layer with trees, grass, and then the underground. Uh, they have added this uh, granite kind of sec rough granite section to it. To just add some plasticity and the sections, the spaces are all uh, differentiated with different textures of wood. Uh, this is an interior uh, section study. So in this case again we are starting with an overall outline. There's actually a video tutorial on YouTube for this. If you want I can uh, share the link. And then uh, all the rooms are edited with some of these textures and then these light features are also added in Photoshop as well as the uh, lighting assemblies and the background, uh, kind of the, 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 the table, the chair, um, the, shelf, the shelves over there, the bathroom sink, and all of that, these furniture. So they're, they're all added on top of the line drawing in Photoshop. Um, this will be kind of a simple example um, of how to use sections 
and lay them over kind of a background to add more depth. Uh, this is another example by ha Alex, and it's kind of a hybrid drawing. If you look at it, it's partially section, partially plan. It's kind of showing you where the plan, the section is cut from the plan, and it's kind of uh, making a nice graphic, um, uh, graphic drawing, right? Uh, this is another one. So this is kind of the essence of what we'll be working for the assignment to textures. So it's basically taking an orthographic drawing and adding things to it to kind of stylize it further. Maybe you're adding some kind of a wall condition or texture to a space or something to the background, silhouettes, uh, maybe some uh, shading to it. But I'm showing you other examples so that you can also develop some um, visual taste for these sorts of drawings. And maybe you want to like study them further in your uh, in your career. Um, and what I would also recommend you, um, there's a phenomenon called um, architectural hoarding. You basically should collect drawings that you like and, you know, like store them in a folder and keep, you know, increasing that repertoire so that you can always look at them, maybe print them, pin them up to your... Uh, your wall so that you look at you see them every day and they kind of inspire you to do similar drawings so that you can develop a similar taste style and it will be really helpful for you as you like go further in the education so that when you get to do your portfolio you will have really nice drawings and style you have developed that stands out when you present to uh, a company for a job right um, this is another one, it's a planimetric drawing. So your plan drawings will be actually similar to this. So it's basically showing you the cut elements are all pochéed out and the rest is kind of stylized with these uh, textures, shading, shadows, right? So it's kind of, we're going to do similar uh, gimmicks. This is more like an artsy edition. It, it's less architectural, I would say, but yours will be more architectural. Um, this is another example. So again, the ground line is cut. We see the soil, the background, and the spaces. They, by adding these textures, layers, you're basically adding depth to the section. So they're not two-dimensional anymore, right? Something similar here. It's kind of a collage. Another one. And this is the first example I showed you, basically, the section. So this is what we already have generated, something similar to this in Illustrator. And we're going to bring it in Photoshop. Um, another one. I'm just going to run through these. This is more of a picturesque example um, where it shows kind of a lot more detail. Right? But so this is what's cut, and then we see the landscape. And the, as the elements go further away from us, they get more transparent. And uh, those layers are basically added in Photoshop. Another example. This is more like a uh, watercolor uh, type of thing. Back to the start. So that's kind of the uh, drawings I wanted to show you. Um, and the example today I'm going to do you, uh, I mean do today is show to you is going to be something similar. So we're going to start with an illustrator. This is where I left off, right? So you know how to add uh, the pochet the silhouettes, the trees, uh, the shadows on top of each other. This is all prepared in Illustrator and we're going to take it and make it look like this in Photoshop. So it's kind of adding textures to some spaces, adding uh, brushes, so it kind of like adds kind of a rustic effect to the walls. So they are not flat anymore, right? So the corners may get less light, so you want to differentiate those. And then um, we, we're going to finish like a vignette um, around the border so you get kind of a background effect and um, we're going to add these different textures to different uh, spaces okay what do you guys think all right so this will be 11 by 23 print okay so the cut will be perfectly around these black edges so that you won't see any white board anymore so you will just see the drawing uh, so you will do two of these sections and a plan, basically, and, and they're going to look similar. All right, it's it's really simple. It's going to be really simple. You're going to be, I think, like surprised how easy it is to make this drawing. Before, after, before, after. Okay, 
So let me show you first how to get bring that type of drawing from Illustrator. So this is what I had in Illustrator. Uh, I'm actually missing some of my silhouettes. So let me first bring those guys in. Uh, let me see if I... Um, I have added some of them here. So maybe we work with this guy. I mean, I can actually do the same example, do a different one. It's it's really up to you. Um, let me bring some some here. Let me grab this silhouette as well. So the layer organization in Illustrator is really important because that's what we are going to use in Photoshop as well to further edit our drawings. Uh, if you want to make quick copies or variations of these silhouettes, you can also go to Object, Transform, Reflect, and you can do a vertical reflection so that you know you flip the thing vertically. So at least like you're kind of adding a variation of the silhouettes. So I have like two of the same guys. Maybe this guy is somewhere here again. Right, I'm using the same silhouettes, but you have the library. You can bring in any any silhouettes to these drawings. So let's go over some of the stuff. We added these two trees. So I have shadows on a layer. Uh, these are um, the fills I added behind the shadow layer so that they will cover the trees. This tree needs to be below that layer so that it's behind it stays behind that wall right and what else do we have we have the pochet ground and the walls and I have these additional textures which I'm going to replace later on but this is kind of where I left off um, last time we were working on uh, this drawing so I have basically a shadow layer I have some fills that cover the trees I have my trees on one layer and I have my silhouettes on another layer. Uh, this tree is on the same layer so I'm going to take this guy and bring it to layer 13 as well. Uh, we can do the renaming here or in Photoshop, doesn't matter. And then I have my lines somewhere. Uh, let me see. These are some of the lines. This is lines in elevation. I'm also seeing the make 2D layer here and this is where my poche is so poche is kind of all the way over the top because it covers all the all the stuff right it's what I'm what I'm cutting so it's going to be fully black there isn't going to be any texture or anything else added on top of it so this is what I prepared what I'm going to do is come to file export save as type I'm going to choose Photoshop so the advantage of using an Adobe product is you can export one file to another program while maintaining layer hierarchy and uh, geometry. So when I am export this to Photoshop and open it in Photoshop, you will see that I have all the objects in the same layers and it will enable me to further edit them, right? So this is not a flat image basically. It's already layered and I want to maintain those layers. but utilize Photoshop tools. So I'm going to choose sections, PSD. I'm going to enable the use artboards. And I'm going to specify a range. Uh, I actually forgot to look up the artboards here. So I want to export this guy and this guy. I'm going to go to document setup, edit artboards. This is artboard number two and this is artboard number three. So what I'm going to do is file, export, Photoshop, use artboards range is going to be two to three so I get two files one artboard is uh, going to be artboard number two and one artboard is going to be artboard number three and let me go to my media modeling folder textures and I want to save them here so I'm going to do export and I get this box that uh, asks me for some settings um, I want to do right layers preserve text editability, maximum editability, that should be on. 
resolution you want to select something high so let's say go with 300 um, point per pixel I think this is pixel per inch pixel per inch and sometimes it gives like a memory error um, I mean this is I think the new illustrator so it may th that problem may have been solved uh, I'm gonna just say okay let's see so it's basically now converting my illustrated file to Photoshop um, sure it, it was a default setting I didn't change anything I just made sure that right la right to layers was enabled because I want to maintain my layers I open Photoshop so I created two files here sections 2 is the second artboard sections 3 is the third artboard I'm going to open the third artboard and let's look at what that file looks like and hit OK so the Photoshop interface is really similar to Illustrator interface um, basically we have layers we have some tools right and we have some um, some toolbars on top as well and I'm going to be showing you only the stuff you need to know it's because Photoshop is like uh, has a lot of different complex tools but all you need to know is kind of uh, make your get your way around like have the layer tab on the right tools on the left and make sure that you can edit some of the features of the tools you're using on this toolbar right so this is kind of my canvas and the main difference between Photoshop and Illustrator is Illustri Illustrator uses more vector based geometry so we can use lines line work line weights line thicknesses line types right so it, it's kind of overwriting vector data but here we are editing pixels so pixels are basically uh, those dots where uh, they get like a definite color so that, that that's not vector graphics basically this is pixel graphics um, and in this case I have a resolution right for 11 by 23 inch and if I want to see that I could go to image image size and right now my resolution is my width is 23 inches and my height is 11 inches and my resolution is 300 pixels per inch and that gives me a dimension of 6900 by 3300 pixels right so what does that mean it means 6900 times 3300 pixels I have and each pixel has a different color right different they store a different uh, RGB value and that's how uh, we're going to edit this drawing further and here I have a few of the layers maintained as well so we'll be doing some renaming here so that we can keep things organized and I'll be also locking the things that I I have already edited so to begin with uh, I want to see kind of we don't have any canvas in the background because what the artboard we edit, exported doesn't have any background so I'm going to first add a background here so that we can see the same drawing we export from, from Illustrator so I'm gonna come here to my layer tab um, so first thing is I'm going to add a background fill it's going to be an empty white fill so what how do I do it I'm gonna open the layer tab come down here to the right bottom it says create new layer next to the trash can it's create new layer I click on that and by default the new layer is created all the way on top okay I'm going to double click and rename it call it uh, white background and then I'm going to hold it click on it click hold and then drop it all the way down this is the layer order so I'm putting it all the way back in layer order right so it goes behind whatever is above it so when this layer is selected have this layer selected so now whatever I'm doing on the canvas is going to be added as pixels stored as pixels on that layer so I'm gonna come down here I have bucket tool paint bucket tool shortcut is G on the left paint bucket tool and make sure that this is white this thing is white if not double click here choose white pixel choose, uh, choose white color otherwise you can enter RGBS 255 or uh, 6F's for white hit OK come on to the canvas uh, 
next to the trash can. Click here, create new layer. Uh, double click. So these are the two available foreground, background uh, color settings for Photoshop. Double click and choose white. Yeah, pick it from the corner. I mean, by default, I see the white on my selection. Otherwise, enter RGB 255. Hit OK. Come onto the canvas. Click on the canvas. OK. So what that does is it puts a white fill to all that layer. Pixels. It's on the gradient. It's on the gradient. If you see the gradient, it's the second after the gradient. OK. Click Hold. And then see under the drop down, there's paint bucket tool there. We're going to use gradient as well, so it's, it's basically the same tab. Okay, so this is how I add a fill to a layer. Now I'm done with the white background. I'm going to choose white background, come all the way up here, and hit lock. So now that layer is locked. I'm not going to touch it, right? So if you see this lock sign, the layer is locked. The left, the eye signal is basically visibility. If I click on it, it will turn it on and off so I can see what's stored in that layer. Okay, there's just a white fill on that layer. Now let's go through some of these other layers that I have and see what kind of information is stored on them. So layer 13 basically has the trees, right? So I'm going to double click on layer 13 and type in trees. I'm going to rename it and select that and lock it. I'm not going to edit that anymore. Layer 12 has a fill over uh, the trees layer, so I'm going to double click on it and call it fill and lock it. The one above it has all the shadows, and that's fine. I'm going to lock it as well. This one has silhouettes, that's fine. Lock that. Now, this guy, I'm not sure what it has. Let's see. I'm going to zoom in a bit. To zoom in, you can use Control plus, Control minus. Zoom in, zoom out is Control plus, Control minus. Or you could go to Window tab and pull up Navigator. Navigator. Whichever one is easy for you. I, I like using Spacebar. Control plus and control minus so that I can zoom in, zoom out, and pan around my canvas easily. Or you can open up a navigator, and the navigator basically will enable you to zoom in, zoom out. And then you can also use the navigator to pan around the canvas. Huh? Yeah, you, you, can, you can do that too. Uh, yeah, Alt Roller does that too as well. Uh, but navigator also works so they all do the same thing um, so I'm gonna zoom in a bit come down here so let's see what we have I have I don't know where these paths are so if they're not storing any information or they're kind of you know unnecessary geometry we can select it and trash it so we get rid of that layer basically now I have uh, the second one the, the one after that is make 2D layer and that has all my pochets so I'm going to double click and type in pochet to it and that should be locked as well you're not going to edit it anymore say it again I can't understand okay then the next next layer is uh, these lines uh, let's see. I'm going to zoom in. Oh, wait. The, that one had... I think the one I deleted had these, has, had these wood fills. That's fine. That's fine. We don't need them anymore. That's fine. That's fine. We're going to replace it with a texture. Okay? Uh, this guy has lines, so I'm going to call it uh, Elevation Lines. And I'm going to lock that. This one has section lines. I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but it's basically if you hide pochet, these are the cut lines. Right? So 
this guy is elevation lines, this guy is cut lines. And I'm going to lock that as well. And then I have back lines, and then I have a hatch here. So the hatch we can also delete. Right, we're not going to need those parallel lines. We're going to replace it with some texture. So this is kind of what I have. And those are the layers I have. Textures. So I want you to go to uh, image mode. So this is where we edit uh, the style of our drawing, like the um, what kind of information we are storing on the Photoshop file. Right now we are preparing a CMYK color template, so we can actually use color, but I'm going to limit that to grayscale because these images are going to be grayscale. So I'm going to choose the mode to be grayscale and Photoshop is going to ask me to merge the layers. I'm going to say don't merge so that we maintain our layers and it says discard color information. I'm going to say okay to that because there's no color anyway. Okay, so now I have a grayscale template. Now if you go to T-square on the resources uh, on the resources I added a new folder called textures and I want you to download some of these textures that you want to use for your section. Right? It could be anything. So I'm going to open some of them and show you what they look like. Um, sorry they all have generic names but Basically, you may want to go through them like this is a concrete. I want to save that guy and call it concrete texture. I'm going to use that. I have something cracked like this. Maybe this will be for the plan. I have some wood. This is, let's, let's call it a wall surface. Just give them names. Um, brick wood floor. This may be okay. I had like a better one. This guy. I wish you could see the previews, but I also use this one. The stones. Um, yeah, just save it as, just download as images. So there's gravel, there are these tiles, so let's get these tiles as well. Just gonna get a bunch to use and then decide on which one I like. Uh, let's say wall 2. Uh, there's stone. There's parquet. Let's use this guy as well. Wood. And then stone. So I got a bunch of them. And I want you to download a bunch of them. Uh, and create them like in a folder. So call it textures. And I'm going to choose these guys and I have two four five textures and I'm going to use some of them so these are the textures I got from that folder if you want to find your own textures you're more than welcome to do it uh, you could do architecture wall textures go to images so you could use something that is planar right you cannot use uh, this image you cannot use this image they're in perspective you need a two-dimensional texture so this could be used um, and try to find something that has a lot of area like this brick is pretty small you will need to extend on it like copy multiple textures along both sides so it will be a bit tedious uh, you could maybe use this guy this is not too bad so you can make horizontal copy of it I actually like this one I'm going to use it. <laughs> so let's call it uh, stacked. So we can make horizontal copies of it. So they, they're like panels, right? Um, what else? Um, I would like you to go with orthogonal geometry for now. Uh, but if you want to be fancy, uh, give it a shot. I'm okay with whatever looks good. Okay. <laughs> So if you want to show me, send me an email about like, hey, this is what I used. How do, what do you think? I'll send you feedback if you're unsure about it. Uh, but find stuff that don't have any watermarks on it. You won't be able to use them. 
like this one is unusable unless I crop a portion of it um, okay or if you want to look for something specific like wall textures stone you can look up old stone you can look up uh, wood right like this is not bad actually this is pretty good so it's basically we are multiplying right we were just using horizontal lines that we added uh, with hatches in uh, Rhino and Illustrator now we're adding some textures to it using images right so get your images so since we set our file to be grayscale whatever I bring in here to another layer it's gonna be in grayscale so I don't have to do image conversion anymore so all I have to do is create a new layer let's double click um, let's create a new layer and then this layer I'm going to rename let's call stacked wall that's going to be one of my first textures I'm going to move um, my Photoshop here and then my folder is here I'm going to grab this PNG or JPEG whatever image format you have click and drag it to the canvas and that will be placed under that layer and um, Photoshop hasn't pl placed it yet so just hit enter and you'll be able to see the pixels of it right sure so um, I create a new layer for my first wall I call this stacked stack texture and then I got this texture file in my folder clicked and dragged to my canvas so it automatically converts it to grayscale because my canvas is grayscale so every every pixel only stores grayscale information and then it has the transform ability right now but I'm not going to do that yet so I just hit enter for placement and now I have an object on my canvas that I could use huh? no I just clicked and dragged it I just dr dropped it into the canvas <laughs> this texture in the space alright so I'm going to replace um, this space with this guy so first what I want to do is find like a nice scale for this to be placed at so I'm going to hit control T for transformation or you could go to edit uh, transform free transform is there All right so what free transform does is you can hold shift and you can do scaling so you can stretch the image right so I'm going to use control plus minus space bar to kind of move around a bit so I want to bring this down somewhere here and then stretch it down until it kind of fits to the whole wall basically okay so that looks good to me yours doesn't snap no the, the transformation control T opens up transformation if you don't hold shift that will be dynamic stretching you don't want to do that you want to hold shift and then do the stretching right so if you hold shift and go to the corner you'll be able to edit both X and Y it's okay it's okay it's because um, it's I mean pixel snapping is a bit tough um, to compute then I pressed enter I exited the uh, transform now the next thing I'm going to do is similar to how we copied stuff in Illustrator I'm going to hold alt key and then make a copy of this texture horizontally so I mean still in the same stack layer I'm gonna hold alt key on my keyboard you see how my cursor changes it goes to the double uh, copy cursor and then I'm going to click and drag and then make a copy of this panel on the side of it and then do it again say what? yeah 
Oh, you want to do two two of them stacked? We'll be able to join and edit them together. I'll, I'll, ju I'll show that in a second. So I'm copying the layer. So let's say I got something like a condition like this. Uh, I can do a, a bunch of things. I'm going to first choose the, these three copies that I made. I'm going to hit Control E. Control E merges them into one single layer. So I'm, I'm basically creating stacks of it, vertically or horizontally, and then hitting Control e to join them. And then the next thing I'm going to do is find, like, because we are reading these joints, uh, maybe we want to um, move it in such a way, or stretch it in such a way. So let's say, let's do dynamic stretching this time, so that it fits perfectly to that space. So I can come in here, Move this up a bit. I'm checking if it fits perfectly to that space. Alright, so I guess. Yeah. I need to find the location for this guy to place it um, inside that room, right? So it has to be behind the shadow layer. And it has to be above the background fill so that we can still see the texture. And it has to be behind the poche, behind the uh, lines behind other stuff behind the silhouette right so I need to find in front of the white background so I need to find where it needs to be so I have shadows here so what I'm going to do is click on the stacked copy here I'm going to rename it stacked wall stacked wall and then click and drag it under the shadow layer so I have poche Elevation lines, cut lines, back lines. Uh. Huh? Yeah, it's on its its own layer. Uh, make it make it under like make it individual here like this. So if you, if I drag it into a folder, it will go in, inside that folder. I just uh, trim it. Uh, I just did Control T and then adjusted the edges. Um, but if you like, I'm going to do another example where I'm going to actually trim the pixels, and we will look in look into how to do that as well. So, does everybody recognize a problem here? So let me show you. When I hide the shadow layer. In the shadows, these pixels have some transparency. There's some fill here as well. And I need to get rid of those somehow. 
Okay, so I got some fields basically. When, when we save that shadow image, the shadow image comes with uh, the, sh the actual shadows and the shaded elements, right? So I need to get rid of the shaded elements so that I can expose the textures as they are. So I can just isolate the shadows inside that layer. So what I'm going to do is go to this shadow layer, okay? And here's how, here's a way to select only the shadows. I'm going to go to select, color range, now I'm going to click on the shadow here, hold shift and click a bunch more times, click here to another shaded area and fuzziness is ok, when I hit ok uh, let me see what what's going on. Let's do that again. Select color range. Let's do it this way. Let's wait, wait, wait. No, we have to. We have to un. So right click to the eye and do show hide all other layers and just turn on the shadow layer uh, so go to the go to the eye, eye symbol go to the eye symbol next to the shadow layer right click and then do show hide all other layers so it will basically isolate that layer for you right and then I'm going to open the linked file Turn the opacity to be 100% so that I can see that image, what, what that image is. So what we need to do is isolate all these black pixels and get rid of all the white. You guys see the white? So when I have opacity... Huh? All the gray inside this linked file. So I'm going to go to select, color range. I'm going to click here, click a bunch more times to other gray areas just to have the color range be able to select it. And then once you're OK, hit OK and then the selection will grab every pixel that has same property, same color property. And when, that's, when I see that selection, I'm going to hit delete. So those pixels will be deleted. Okay. Sure. We're deleting the gray because that is overlapping with the texture I'm adding, right? Yeah. When I rendered my file, it renders it with the shadows as well as the elements inside the model, right? So the gray that I'm seeing is the geometry, the wall. We are deleting the gray because it will be a fill. I don't want to see that fill. I only want to get the shadows. So go to select, color range, hold uh, shift and click a bunch of times to these gray areas because that's the pixel, that's the color I want to select. And then fuzziness, let's make, let's, let's drop the fuzziness to zero. Drop the fuzziness to zero. Hit OK. And then hit delete. Fuzziness, I think, extends the range of selection. So when I deleted it before, it also deleted some of the color value of the black. And I didn't want to do that. I want to just get rid of all the gray fills so I see the black as clear as possible, right? It's just, I just want to get the shadow isolated. Okay? I'll do that one more time. All of this. So this is where I started. I want to edit my shadows. So make sure that this is unlocked. So if the if this guy is locked, the parent is locked, you have to unlock the parent. You can just click on the lock symbol here. Then go to the linked file. 
the opacity, I bumped it up to 100% so that I can see the, uh, the shadows. Then the next thing is, I want to isolate this guy. So I right click on the shadows and then do show hide all other layers. And then turn up my linked file. If you don't want to see this kind of cluster information, you can just click and drag the linked file out of there and rename it as shadow and delete this folder because it doesn't contain anything. It's just a folder, right? So these are my shadows. And then when I'm inside the shadow layer, everything else is hidden. I go to select, color range, and hold shift and click on the gray areas. And drop fuzziness to zero and hit OK. It will color range will select all the gray areas inside this layer and then I hit delete. So I get rid of those pixels in that layer basically. Then I'm going to bring in every other layer. So I right click again to the eye symbol and then do show hide all other layers so they are brought back. So you can see now the texture I just added it doesn't have any transparency on top of it, right? So I'm seeing it as is. Color range. Select color range. How do you deselect it? Just go here, click on any of these selections and click anywhere else. It will deselect it. Now I want to add the transparency back to the shadow layer, so select the shadows and come down to opacity, enter 30. Okay, so now what I have is some shadows cast onto my texture. Alright, so I'm going to choose my stacked wall. Let's say I want to bring up, um, I want to play around with how this image looks like a bit. What I'm going to do is go to um, thinking where it was, what it was called. Curves. I want to edit the curves. Um, edit image adjustments curves. Yeah. So select your select the first texture you added. Go to image adjustments curves. Or you can type in Control M as shortcut on your keyboard. Okay, control M for curves or go to image adjustments curves. Now in this tab, look at what happens. So this is the um, pixel, this is the pixel information of the, of that layer. So if I move this curve, it will basically override the pixel information. So I can make it darker, I can make it lighter, so I can play around with how I want it to appear basically, right? So if I think it's too dark with respect to the image, I can come down here and edit the curves and kind of find a balance. If I click anywhere on this curve, I'll be adding another control point. So be careful with, you know, increasing the crispiness. So I, something that is like slightly deviates along this diagonal tends to work. When you go up, um, if you want to delete these control points, you can just click and drag away from the chart. But normally one control point is enough. So you just want to like lighten or darken it. This will be a quick way of doing it while also seeing a preview of it. So I'm going to lighten it up a bit and hit OK. So that's one of my textures. Now maybe the shadows are not too crisp. So if I want to darken the shadows, I can come back to the shadow layer and bump up the opacity to 40%. Right, so I can have this back and forth playing with the textures I'm adding and with the shadows I'm placing. 
So that's the first texture I added to one of the rooms. So I'm going to do the same thing to this room. And I'm going to do the same thing to this wall here. Okay? So if you want, you can watch me do it. Or maybe I'll, I'll have you do it. So just bring up another texture. Any of these. Any of the stuff you downloaded. So let me show you one more trick before I do that. So for instance, let's say I'm going to use this concrete texture. I bring it here. If I don't want to distort the image, but I want it to perfectly fit horizontally and vertically. So let's say this is the size. So one panel is like six feet, right? That's the size of my silhouette. And let's say one, one panel is six feet. I'm going to hold Alt, move it up, so that's the vertical stack, and then choose both of them holding Shift on my uh, keyboard. I can choose multiple layers at the same time, and I'm going to click and drag a horizontal copy of it. So now, I'm going to choose all of these copies, and Control e merges them. So this is that textured wall, basically. Right? So let's say... Um, I mean two ways. You could either um, use the keyboard to nudge it. This actually fits perfectly to that space when you keep it at six feet. But let's say if it doesn't fit, let's say um, let's say this is what you want to have. Let's say I want to have something like this. I want to get rid of all this information on this file. One way of doing it is to come here with the marquee tool under the move tool on the toolbar. Click here, choose rectangle marquee tool. I'm going to drag a rectangle around that space. Uh, actually, make sure that the feather is zero. We don't want any feather. Make sure the feather is zero and then draw your selection. Draw it kind of around the black uh, poche so that you can trim a bit outside of the image. So there are no like white unfilled areas. Once you have that selection, right click to the selection and choose select inverse. It will choose the reverse pixel information, right? So. I isolated that selection and when I do select inverse it selects every other pixel in the canvas and then I'm gonna hit delete it basically deletes it like I, I'm basically trying to get rid of the extending texture I just placed right uh, selection I selected rectangle marquee and make sure the feather is zero feather basically uh, is like a soft selection around the border uh, you don't want that you want to have crisp uh, cropping and then let's say I'm happy with this. I'm going to put it under the shadows. I'm going to hit Control M for curves again and maybe make this a bit darker. So slightly moving it up. So I get something like that. Okay. Select my stacked wall and give it some opacity. Let's say 70% so it gets lighter. Right? My shadows are a bit off, I think. So I'm going to choose my shadows, use the move key, and then use the keyboard and nudge it so that it lines perfectly with the space. Make sure that you also have that. Zoom in and look at the pixel information. My shadows were off. Don't print them like this. Right? You want the shadows to be exactly flush as well as the textures. Flush with the, with the surfaces. Let's see what are what we are missing. Uh, so this is this was the image. I'm gonna show you how to add brushes and how to add the background, and that's basically going to be it. But first, I'm gonna add the last texture here. So I go to my textures again. Let's grab one more guy. Um, let's do the tiles. So I'll bring in the tiles. 
So let's say these are um, these fit perfectly to this wall. You may also want to see if they are modular enough so that you can make copies of it. All right. So this guy, I'm going to copy horizontally. Now this doesn't fit here. So what I'm going to do is uh, Control E to join these two. A lot of you have been asking this question. Um, when we bring in a file, it brings in as a smart object. If you want to edit the pixels of it, you need to convert these. If you look at the symbol, this is a smart object symbol. If you want to edit the pixels of this guy, you need to right click and do rasterize layer so that it converts it into pixel information. And now if I make copies, the copy will also have uh, pixels. So now I'm going to find a place for this where it kind of lines up. Let's see. Would it fit? This is as close as it gets, I guess. So let's let's keep it at here. And then I'm going to make keep making horizontal copies of this. And make sure the gaps between the copies is the same. So these two, I'm going to push them right a bit. You can use the keyboard key keys to nudge them. Once you're happy with some of the copies, you could just join them. So these guys, I could do Control E, these two, Control E, and these guys I'm going to bring down here as well. Right? So this wall configuration is going to go from here all the way to the end of the stair. So I need to move it out a bit more. So I'm going to use the keyboard and move it all the way up to there. And make sure that I have it starting from a perfect tile and it's going all the way to there. Here's another way you can select the pixels. So I want to select this region to trim this guy, right? So I need to find where that fill is. So I have some elevation lines layer here. So maybe I can use that. So let's see. If I if I choose let me try doing this. If I choose the magic wand and click here, it grabs me that area. That's not what I want. Uh what about the poche? Doesn't work as well. I guess we have to select it directly. Um, you have to merge them, I think, for the magic wand to work. But um, if you have a situation like this, what I would recommend is uh, go with subtraction, right? So I can, I can basically come in here, draw a marquee around the area where I want to subtract. So let's say this is the area I want to subtract, and I can use the keyboard keys to dodge the marquee as well. And the other option is we can also stretch the marquee. If you go to select. Um, and then do modify where is the transform selection if you do transform selection I can grab the selection and stretch it horizontally so that I'm s I can extend the boundary of it and then when I'm happy with this selection apply transformation apply I can hit delete and get rid of that area where I don't want the fill to be and I'm going to do the same to the other side so I'm going to come in here and delete that part as well. So I kind of added that final texture to that wall. And I'm going to hit Control M and make it a bit darker. And we can also bring up the lines a bit. Something like that. Okay? Um, to kind of add um, a bit more 
uh, effect to our section. If you look at the, let's look at the uh, example I had. So basically, when I add a texture here, it becomes a flat element, right? So what we want to do is add these shadows on spaces where we think is going to receive less light so that they kind of add um, more plasticity to our sections. To do that, I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call it the brush. And when that layer is selected, I'm going to come in with the brush tool shortcut is B. I select the brush. Then I'm going to go to the brush settings here. I'm going to select um, a soft brush, something that has this gradient mark. Right? This would work or the third one would work basically. And drop the size to let's say 100 pixels. So let, let's do 250. 250 seems to be better. And then when I'm in that layer, I'm going to select the areas I want to brush. And then I'm going to hit, I'm going to uh, add some paint there. So basically, let's say if I want to brush over this texture, this wall, what I can do is first choose the pixels of this layer. To do that, it's really simple actually. So the tiles, this layer I created, right? Tiles, this texture. To, to select its pixels, I hold control on my keyboard and click on this image. You guys see it turns out to be a selection. Uh, thumbnail and then when I click on that layer it selects all the pixels of that layer right it brings it as a selection the reason why I'm doing it this way is because I don't want to select anything else I just want to select those pixels right and then after doing that when I have that selection done I can switch to my brush layer brush layer so now if I brush anything here, I'm doing white, I'm going to switch to black. You can hit X on your keyboard or you can change the, uh, the brush color to black. What you want to do is come in here. Um, it's actually really small. Let's bump up our brush size. Let's make it um, 400. So I'm going to come down here and add these brushes, like brush strokes, to the areas where the texture meets with geometry, like stairs, wall corners, right? So it's kind of going to add some plasticity to the wall around that edge. Think of it as like either being dirty or like getting less light, right? And I can do it like at random spots or at random corners as well. So let's say like something here, something there. So maybe this corner gets less light as well because there's some geometry above it. Okay. After I do that, I'm going to hit selection, deselected, and basically I didn't paint over the tiles. Tiles is another layer. I painted over the brushes. Oh, I think I forgot to choose that layer. Let me go back. Sorry. So you need to choose the brush layer and then do this operation. So I'll do it again. So add here, brush, add some brushes here to these corners, add some brushes to the stairs, add some brush to this corner where you think like this uh, will cast some more shadows, and then some random brushes to the corners where you think like will receive less light. Maybe this guy is casting some shadow, right? And then once it's done, this is basically, I add it to the brush layer. Yeah. Choose the pixels, you hold control on your keyboard. 
and select the uh, thumbnail of the layer. So if I want to choose the pixels of the tiles, I hold key control on my keyboard and click on the thumbnail of the layer and it will grab all the pixels automatically. So after I add the brush, what, I, what I'm going to do is go to the brush layer and decrease the opacity. So I'm going to make it, uh, let's say, 60%, 70%. Let's try some. Let's uh, do 50%. So it's going to basically add some more depth to the image. If you want to see the effect, you can do before and after. So this is before, this is after. Before, after, before, after, right? So it's going to, I'm basically adding basically adding these effects. Right? So this area gets less light, so it doesn't have to be a cl like a flat shade. I'm basically adding some depth to it. So I'm going to keep doing this for the other spaces as well. So let's say um, I want to do it under this area. I'm going to go to my brush layer again and then choose this area with the marquee and then hit B for brush and then come in here and then brush over it so I'm holding and dragging to brush so I can brush this corner a bit as well so maybe this ground a bit it's a really soft operation It's a bit like graffiti. I actually overdid it, I think, here. So let me go back. So let's do, let's increase the brush size. To increase the brush size, uh, the shortcut is the brackets. The open brackets and close brackets increase and decrease the brush size. So you could do like, go soft about it right so sh make sure that what you're doing looks good say what my history is a window history so you can undo and go back the operations here if you want it so I added some more brushes there I'm gonna add some more into the space here so again I can select the pixels of this layer uh, that was the stacked wall so I hit control, click on the stacked wall pixels to grab their pixels, and then switch to the brush layer. And then activate my brush, and then brush over the space, right? So I'm going to add some to this corner, to the top, so it becomes darker. Maybe this guy. Uh, I can also reduce my brush size, so maybe there's like a little bit of stain there. And the last ones I'm going to do are going to be here. So I'm going to choose this area under that um, that block. And then while in brush, come down here, add some brush to this corner. Maybe some to this corner. Some there and then some at the bottom. So you guys ready? So this is this is what I did with the brush. This is how it looked before. Before, after, before, after. Right? It adds like a nice plasticity to it. I also need to add one here. So let's go down here. Select that layer using the tiles. Now that was concrete texture. Brush like this corner could be really dark right it's not gonna get as much light so I can make it really dark I can add like multiple brushes on top of each other until it's like really darkened and then come down here decrease the brush size and maybe add some behind this guy here to this floor here where the shadow hits maybe to this corner a bit uh, these close and open brackets their brackets yeah on the keyboard it's uh, under the backspace on my keyboard so that like sh 
reduces the diameter and like increases the diameter. Yeah. Right. So those are the those are the brushes layers selected as well. I I don't think if I, I record all of that. So let me do it again. So I'm choosing the gradient layer. It's located under the paint bucket. Under the uh, gradient option, I'm choosing the second one, black to transparent, and then I have linear gradient option selected. So I'm going to show you a bunch of gradient options. The first one would be where we take the horizon as black and then it goes to white or transparent. So I'm going to click somewhere here when I'm on the gradient layer. And then I'm going to draw a line and I'm going to end the line somewhere here. So what it's going to do is it's going to add a gradient. It's going to add a gradient that has black as a starting point and then it's going to go to transparency, right? And this one is too dark for me, so what I'm what I can do is I can reduce its opacity so I can come down here and find like a nice balance. And since it's all the way behind my drawing, I can find uh, the kind of setting that fits right for this. Um, the other thing I can also do is like the trees are pretty much, they look like foggy. So we may want to darken the trees. So I can come down here, select the trees. The trees are here. I'm going to merge them with Control E. Rename it as trees. I'm going to choose, uh, let me see, can I choose these? It says group. Right click, blending options, color overlay, black. Cancel. I think they have transparency, yeah. They have transparency. So the trees, I can increase their transparency as well. So let's make them 80%. So they're a bit darker. Like this guy, I can make some copies of it. And then you guys know what I need to do. I need to get rid of the trunks, right? So I need to add a fill there above um, this. So basically my fill layer is here. So I need to add some more stuff to this fill layer. So basically, I need to come in. I'm going to hold the selection. I'm going to do this a bit fast. But if you want, I can review it again. So I'm going to choose these areas. And I'm going to add a white fill there. So go to paint bucket again, white fill, add a white fill there. So it, I'm basically covering over the trees. Right? So the visual balance is something like this. So either the background is darker and then the elements are uh, lighter or vice versa. Background is lighter, elements are darker. So I can play around with trees. I can play around with the background gradients. Let's do another type of gradient. Uh, let's do a vignette. So I'm going to create a new layer. Place this under the existing gradient. Uh, the trees were under a folder. Uh, mine were 30%. So I created a new layer. Double click, type in vignette. So this guy is going to be, I'm going to take off this gradient, existing gradient. And for this vignette, I'm going to go to the gradient tool again. Choose uh, black to white. Black to white, uh, black to transparent, and I'm going to choose radial gradient this time. So we, I, I showed you linear gradient. Now I'm going to do radial gradient, and for the radial gradient, I'm going to choose um, reverse, so that it goes from transparent to black. So when I click from the middle to the edge, it starts with a transparent fill and then adds the vignette to the edges of my canvas. So if I click to the middle and click like a diagonal corner, it will add something like this, right? So it's like a radial gradient. And I can also, for the other one I use 60%, I could lower this as well, so like to 60%. Uh, let's do 80. Sure. 
So the second gradient I was doing is the vignette. So I create a new layer called it vignette. Went to my gradient tool again. I'm doing a black to transparent um, gradient, but I chose reverse so that when, when you choose reverse, it flips the order of uh, this input. So to, to add a gradient, I'm drawing a line. The first point of the line is the left side of this gradient. It will be black. It will specify where I want to add the black. And the second point will specify where I want it to be transparent. If I click reverse, it will be reversed. So the first point is going to be transparent. The second point is going to be black, right? So the vignette is basically a black halo around the canvas uh, to add some depth. And to do that, I'm choosing the radial gradient option, which is the second next to uh, the gradient tool. And then I'm clicking somewhere in the middle of my canvas and then clicking like a corner around, around the corner point around the corner and then I add my radial vignette and this guy is too dark it's blending with the fill and the pochets I have so what I need to do is add some opacity to it so I come down here add some opacity let's say 75 okay so it's similar to the brush but it's more like an overall effect so this one has a radial vignette as well uh, and you, you may want to play around with the scales of these. For instance, uh, let me do another one. This guy, I'm going to do a bit larger. And the center of the vignette, I'm going to choose somewhere here. So I can do the vignette somewhere like this. Right? So, the, so I get like a, almost like a, a sunset type of effect. At one, yeah. Uh, not the vignette. Just the fills and brush. And the shadows. Um, good question. I, To be honest, I didn't have time to review how the trees were going to look on the plan. Don't add the trees on the plan yet. Just add them in section because uh, the section looks too empty without elements on it. But the plan will be fine, I think with more textures and I'll come around uh, let me record this too when you're going to save your final image um, like you can just save it as um, a PDF if you want it it doesn't have to be a PDF though uh, the best file format to not lose data would be a BMP um, if you want to save a JPEG you may lose geometry or information so be careful with that. Sometimes you can just take your Photoshop file and print from Photoshop as well. The print, the plotter will support that. Uh, you're not going to get cutting marks from the Photoshop files. But you will know where to cut from, right? Because the print is going to be all in color and the sheet is white. So when you print this on a paper, you know where the print is. So the videos I posted, if you looked at it, looked at them the, like they were mounting photos and the photos have are in color and the foam board is white so you will know where to cut basically make sense okay let me draw it um, Assignment two. Uh, let's see. So my topo. My topo is here. This is my model. Um, so I was going to find a place to cut my section from. So I'm doing that with clipping plane. Right? This is my site model. So I'm going to go down a bit. So I could do like a section or a plan from here. 
So these will be pochet. This could be a section. I mean, this could be a plan. Or the other one could be something that cuts through the volumes and everything is in elevation. So it's, I mean, it's up to you. I would like to see a bit more like a balance of pochets and like, uh, like lines in the plan as well. So if you can cut through most of the geometry, I think it will be better. So I'm going to cut through these. Okay. So when I'm cutting through them, I'm going to isolate them by going to the visibility. So I go to visibility, choose invert selection and hide objects. It will basically isolate my model. And uh, yeah, you want to select whatever you want to isolate. And then the next thing is, I have a lot of stuff. I'm going to clean them a bit. The next thing is, I have my layers, right? I have a section layer, backlines, hatches, all of that. So to generate the section, the cut elements in plan, I'm going to go to an elevation view where my um, clipping plane is also active. So let's say this clipping plane is active in the back, in the right. So right now it's active. If I do section tool in this view, and it says select objects for sections. I have my section layer selected as well. I'm going to select all my solids. Right click, start of select section. I'm going to draw a line where my plan is cut and looking down. Let's do that again. So basically, it, it's not it's not showing, but let me show you. I got these section lines. Of uh, I'll do it again. So I go to the elevation. I found the level I want to cut my section uh, the plan from. Right, I want to cut it from this plan. I can see my clipping plane and the model in the in an elevation view, like back elevation. It doesn't matter. I can do it in the back or the right. I type in section command to cut the section along the plan. Choose the objects, which are all the solid forms. Right click. Start of section. I'm going to trace the clipping plane in elevation view. So I draw a line. Once I draw that line, I right click to confirm. And I basically have my section lines cut. So if I hide my clipping plane or deactivate my clipping plane, my section lines are these. Okay. Uh, my I think my clipping plane lines are too thick. Uh, I probably changed them under display settings. Let me go back and fix that quickly. I don't think you did this as well. So this is let's make it one. So you guys see my section lines for my plan. Those are my section lines for the plan. Then I go to the top view. I'm going to delete these dimensions. Uh, I have a lot of curves, that's fine. So let's switch to rendered view. So these geometries are the cut elements. I can right click to the section layer, do select objects, and move them out. I'm going to move them, let's say, 30 inches away this way. So these are the cut elements. Then I can look at the plan from the top view and do it make 2D and choose everything else. Now I want to do maintain source layers, show tangent edges and current C plane is on. I hit OK. Now I got the uh, make 2D lines in the exact spot I generated them from. So I can move this guy 30 inches and I'm going to put them to another layer. Call it uh, back lines. Right, so now I have a drawing of my plan that has the cut elements as well as the elements in elevation. Right, because I did the section first, I cut the section when the clipping plane was active, I cut a section on an elevation view and put those lines in the section layer. Then I went back to my model in the top view and did make 2D to get the elevation lines, and then I overlapped both of them. So I get a template for my plan drawing, basically. This is my plan. Uh, this line doesn't exist. 
Now, here is the other thing. Um, Max has been asking this question, which is really important. Whatever is above our head needs to be hidden lines, right? So I need to have, like, I need to somehow get them as well. So in this view, what I can do is choose my clipping plane and deactivate it. And then, uh, let me see. Um, perspective, deactivate it. Okay, my boxes are here. And then what I'm going to do... Oh boy, I have a lot of stuff overlapping here. Let me hide these guys. Okay, this should be fine. Yeah. So what I can do is look at the whole model from the top view. Right now, the clipping plane is deactivated, and then figure out where I have a solid form. Where is going to be a dotted line, basically? So I could enable my project and trace over those two volumes. So I could do create a new layer, call it dotted lines, and this one, let's make it uh, red. And then I can come in here. I know there's a there's going to be a form here, right? This solid block. If you look at my model. I cut my plan under the solid block, but the bottom of that solid block needs to be dotted lines. So I can, what I can do is come, come down here, draw a rectangle over that solid block. So I draw a rectangle here. And then... Where did it go? It's, it's right right at the bottom that's fine I drew a, a solid block above that and the other one I'm going to trace over this guy and those are the only two overhanging objects I have in my design and once I do that I have this geometry and I have this geometry and I'm going to move them to the exact space so I, my displacement I'm using a displacement I entered 30 inches so I, move, I made the section lines, move them 30 inches off my model. I make 2D, move them 30 inches off my model. So the same displacement helps me overlap those lines, basically. right? And then I'm drafting the top view, and I'm displacing them 30 inches as well. So they get exactly in the right space where they are supposed to be. So this guy and this guy are going to be dotted when I bring them in Illustrator. All the magenta lines will be hatched, and all the cyan lines will be light. Right? That's basically it. Now let's do it. Let's uh, bring them in. So I first need to clean these up. Back lines, let me hide them. I'm going to trim the pochet lines. This will be joint. These guys will be joint. And that's basically it. This is my template. So I select this guy. File, export selected. Call it Adobe Illustrator. Plan. One to one. Hit OK. Done. Open in Illustrator. I'm done with Rhino. I'm done with Rhino. All I did was for the plan section, elevation lines make 2D, and then know where the uh, geometries are above my head and just bring them in in a di different layer. So I have 3D. I just trace them. I trace them. You can also draft it, right? You, you have a 3D model where you can look at and know where the overhanging geometry is you can trace it you can draft it uh, no, no 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 I did uh, I did it manually you want to have hidden lines here applied already as a style you, I will do it in illustrator I wouldn't do it here so I bring my drawing in uh, illustrator so this is my drawing uh, where's my template? My template is here. Go to document setup, edit artboards. I'm going to create a new artboard. Make it uh, 23 by 23 because that's the dimension of my site. And then go to my plan, copy these guys. Are you attempting to paste drag that are locked or hidden? So let's look at that. So let's rename 
these guys to be plan elevation this guy is plan section plan section this guy is plan overhang plan overhead right that's it I have paste to members layers option available control C to copy control V to paste this goes right this should fit right into that square Uh, I think I'm like a little bit off for some reason. Let me measure this. This guy is 23. This guy is 23. Let me check my artboard dimension. 23, 23. Oh no, this is uh, height is 23. Yeah. Okay. So this guy is right there. Alright? Now my lines are there my layers are there basically half of my job is done all I need to do is undo like hide the overhead and elevation lines these are going to be pochet the section ones right so I choose those lines I go to the uh, the shape builder tool and live paint bucket and then I want to add I double click to the fill choose black And then for the line weight, I'm going to check none. So stroke, none. And then come down here and make these black poche. Done. Now, plan elevation. Choose these guys. Go to stroke. Make them black. Let's see how one punto looks like. That looks okay to me. Okay, that looks fine. Now, overhead. Choose the overhead. Stroke needs to be black. And I need to add a dashed line. I could grab them here. Where are my dashed lines? They are right here. So I hold my eyedropper tool, grab the 2 dash 2 gap. Boom. Those are dashed. If I want, I can make them thicker, 1.5. And let's make them, let's space them out a bit. Let's do 2 by 4. I think it was already a style there. So they're a bit better to see, right? So this is overhanging geometry. This is overhanging geometry. And these are cut. And the rest is in elevation. And guess what? I'm done in Illustrator. Now Photoshop. Right? Oh, I actually need to do a shadow. Let me do the shadow. Let's do the shadows. So I show my model. This is the model I used. I'm going to make a copy of it. You guys remember we cannot uh, cut, um, we cannot render with the clipping plane. Uh, I think it will be fixed in the next Rhino. I think a lot of people are demanding it as a tool. Um, but it's it's really tough rendering wise because render uses geometry. Like when, when you render something, it looks at the layers, not the clipping plane or active configurations in Rhino setup. So that's why computationally it, it, it's a bit tedious. So what I'm going to do instead is come down here, draw a line where I drew my plan from type in split I chose my model choose the line to split I'll do it again choose the model choose the line to split now I'm splitting the geometry at the location where I cut my plan from and then I come in here choose everything above that line and delete it so that the geometries are erased this guy is let me see what's going on there Split. 
template. If you have like stuff that doesn't split, you can run them individually. Uh, but this the guy that doesn't want to split, but that's fine. It's going to be under push anyway. So I come to the top view, switch to rendered view, and then in this view, render, current renderer, Rhino render, and then render properties. Resolution, bump it up. It's 6000 by 4500. Since this is going to be a square drawing, let's make it square. 6000 by 6000. DPI 150. Transparent background. That's all good. Same settings that you use for sections, you should use for plan. Hit OK. And then render. Let's see what we get. So my rendering is done. I'm going to save this one plan rendering with, with as a PNG. And then the other thing I'm going to do is save an alpha channel so that I get um, like a white fill. Actually, I don't need that because my whole plan is going to be a white fill anyway. right? I don't have anything in the background. I, I'm not going to use a vignette or a gradient fill for the background. It's all white. So you just, you just need one PNG save for the shadows for the plan. And then I'm going to, um, basically I'm going to save this, bring it in Photoshop, and then bring the rendering into Photoshop and overlay them. Let's do that now. So I do File, Save As, um, no, we did File, Export, Photoshop PSD, I'm going to call this plan. I'm going to use Artboards, range is going to be, I think this guy is 5. Uh, let me check. This guy is 5. File, Export, Photoshop, PSD, Plan, Use Artboards, Range is 5. Save it to the desktop. Write Layers, Resolution High, hit OK. Let's add some texture to the plan as well. Let's see how that works. So Plan. This is my plan. Okay? How do we start? Create a layer, call it background, go to paint bucket tool, white fill, click on the screen so that you add a white fill to the background. Uh, I guess this is not white, this is gray. Let's do white. Now this is white. Right? I have dotted lines, I have line weights, everything applied, I have my pochets. Now, I want to bring in my shadows. My shadows are here, plan rendering PNG. Copy and bring it here. This is going to be renamed as shadows. Mm -hmm. And what I want to do is scale it up to make it fit to the underlying drawing. Make sure that they line up. Right, so it's going to be something like this. Right? Maybe a little bit more this way. I think this is good enough. Now, how, how was I going about it? I'm going to right click, rasterize this layer, right click to the shadows, show hide all other layers. Now what am I going to do? Color range, delete all the gray, right? So that I only have the black shadows isolated. So I go to select, color range, same steps as I did in the section. Hold shift, select on the gray, select only the gray, hit OK. All the grays that have been selected, delete. I deleted those pixels. Now background is white, Uh, where did my poche go? Uh, poche is here. And these are my shadows. So if I give now transparency to my shadow, 50%, I can play around with that, right? So I have cut elements, I have shadows, I have lines. 
Any questions so far? Absolutely, because shadow also has a shade for the solid geometry, right? That's how it's casting the shadows. So I want to get rid of that to isolate the shadow lines only so that I can add textures behind that shadow line. So then the next thing is adding texture. Let's grab one. Uh, let's grab a new one. Um, T square. There are also some grass textures, gravel textures you can use. Like for landscaping, think of like what kind of textures would go on the ground, right? There could be some uh, gravel, some wood, some stone. Uh, you can use concrete again, wood, um, grass. I also included some grass, uh, but m make sure that when you multiply those, they look like blended, right? They don't look like tiled. Uh, that's actually really tricky with... Uh, with the grass because the patch doesn't fill I mean uh, join perfectly so let's find some uh, I have wood floor Let, let's look into this this is wood wood floor maybe this guy we could use let's save image concrete floor so again it's all about like thinking of you know where, where do I want to put what texture Maybe you want to highlight again a specific zone. Maybe you have a courtyard. You want to put like wood there or a brick or whatever. Uh, I have this grass, so I'm going to try this grass. Uh, let's start playing around with it. So again, I want the textures to be grayscale. So I go to image, mode, image, mode, grayscale. Don't merge. Discard color information. Hit OK and I want to bring in one of those so textures let's bring the concrete floor first this is the concrete floor scale it down right so where does this go maybe it goes through this space here or it could be it could be maybe here this is actually better so let's do it all the way running down here on this line okay so it's also nice like I got these geometry lines from the solid model I had it also it's nice because it's dividing my plan into sections where I could use four different textures so you could also think of that right this doesn't have to be like even if this is a flush surface this doesn't have to be one continuous zone you could also divide it up into different zones for texturing you could also do that so what I'm gonna do is hold my move button come down here Use the Alt key to copy Control T to rotate. I'll do it again. So Control T enables you to scale as well as rotate. So if you go to the corner, you see this rotation. If you hold Shift, your rotation would be snapping. Otherwise, you could also enter an angle value here, like minus 90. So you could flip it to the other side. No, actually, that doesn't leave me with anything good because they don't line up. So I guess we can't do that. So let's just copy it. So this guy is going to be here. Those are big tiles. Or let's make them a bit smaller. And I'm going to make another copy of this. These three I'm going to line up here. And then Control E to merge them. Control E to merge them, and then I can make a copy this way, another copy, and then merge these three as well, so that my next copies are larger patches, right? So I can keep doing this. Right? So this is my concrete runway. And maybe it stops here. It stops right there. Then I can make it some opacity as well. So let's make it let's make it lighter. I'm going to grab a portion of it. And maybe we can reuse it here. 
somewhere here. Let's think maybe here. So for this guy, I need to take out maybe this region and the stairs. So I draw marquees and then delete. Okay, similar stuff. It's just make sure that they don't overlap. You leave some white space between them or some poche between them. Uh, let's. I want to see how the grass is going to look like uh, because I haven't done that. Let's bring the grass in. So this is the grass patch. It actually blends pretty well. Huh? Yeah. Everything grayscale. It won't look as good, trust me. If it, there's already too much complexity with these assignments, like because you're building skills, I also don't want to bring in another ingredient like a color, which is really tricky to manage. Then it's gonna go like it's gonna look like um, elementary school collages. Trust me, there's a there's a fine line between those two. There's like a flashy green there and flashy red there, and it's just just blows. <laughs> um, the grass texture blends pretty well, so we could we could use it. So these two, I can make a larger patch, and maybe this area is a soft space. It doesn't have to be hardwood like a floor. This could be maybe grass, right? This is all about texturing, so you can just uh, be playful about it. So maybe I use like grass somewhere here. Maybe I place it like that. Let's do Control M. Three is fine. Three is on average is fine. And then um, these the plan is going to look like a collage work mostly because because of the textures, the placement, the geometries you're using. I just want to make like a see nice uh, abstract drawing. That's what I want to see. This is the essence of this assignment, right? So you learn about these tools as well as make something that graphically looks nice. I mean, that's the goal of media modeling. So you learn about media as well as modeling. Okay. Um, I mean, the texture is a bit too large for this. I guess I will have to increase the size. So I'm merging as well as I'm copying. Uh, and I'm not sure. Maybe this corner is grass. Maybe the square here is grass. And then I'm going to leave it as just white space, right? You will also have that option. Just play around with it a bit. White space isn't too bad, trust me. It, it balances it, it out. Like You want to actually do minimal touches on the plan with textures. You don't want to put like a large, large patch. You want to leave it as wide as possible. Okay? If I, wanna, if I were to add one more, I'll probably add one here. Probably like something darker. So that it kind of stands out a bit more. And maybe remove this one here. Uh, let let me do that. So let's bring up textures. Uh, let's use this one. I haven't used this one. So maybe this guy fits right in there. It's like a dirty space, right? And then I'm gonna come in choose this part uh, to delete it I need to rasterize this and then delete and that space is behind my view right so maybe maybe I can make it a bit more transparent like 70 percent and then I'm gonna hit I need to put these behind my shadows 
So this goes behind the shadow, so the shadows are cast over that space texture I added. And make sure your lines are above that texture as well, right? So the dotted lines are above that geometry, so we need to see them. And then the next thing is stylizing, the brush. You could use the brush as much as you want. So create a new layer, call it brush. And how did we do it? We did brush. So the brushes could be pretty large, actually, um, for this. So let's go this one. That's fine. So I want to add brushes to this space, right? How do I do it? I want to grab this texture first. So that texture is uh, this guy. Control, click on the selection menu to grab the pixels. And then switch to the brush layer. Uh, I'm adding white brush. So switch to black. Again, I'm not going to click directly onto the selection. I'm going to click slightly over, like outside of the selection, so that I get like whatever is blended in, right? So I add a little bit of it here. So it kind of accents the shadows as well. Maybe a little bit here. Right? So I'm adding depth, basically, to the plan. Now I know that's actually underground a lot better, right? So it's like below my view. Maybe a little bit there. And this is all good, actually. Right? So this is before, this is after. Before, after. You see, it, it, it adds a nice depth. And then I can do the same thing to these volumes. So I can come in. Um, to do these, it's going to be a bit trickier. Um, so what I could do is technically... Like, you could also do it this way. You could just add these brushes and then filter them out or do like a custom custom selection so let's say I, I go to the rectangle marquee I want to select this area that's where I want to add the brush and then I hold shift and then add this area as well right and then switch to brush come in here and then add some add some nice soft touches there Okay, so then I don't go beyond that region, but I also don't want to add a brush on this edge because then I'll get that sharp line where the marquee is, right? So if I add one there, you guys see that I add an I add a sharp marquee edge there. I, I don't want to do that. So that corner, like this corner, is going to get less light, so it makes sense to actually add brushes there to the corner. So I have the shadows to help me, as well as the shadow uh, the the brushes so I could do I could add a bit more over this concrete maybe along this edge I actually like it when you know it's it's you add it kind of at a location where it meets geometry So cl I'm clicking away outside of the marquee, but it's fading it in, right? And I can make this ridiculously large to achieve that goal. Okay?